Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Green Nurse Podcast, where we bring hope and inspiration for growth and healing. We are here to change the dialogue and stigma around what it means to feel good or be high. Hence the H for hope, I for inspiration, G for growth, and H for healing. You deserve to feel good. We all deserve to feel good. And here is a little video about we do in the cannabis space as nurses. And then we're going to get started on our show. Change the paradigm of healthcare. The Green Nurse is a holistic cannabis nurse that teaches on the endocannabinoid system and the safe utilization of cannabis and other progressive tools to help people reach a better quality of life. I'm the founder of Holistic Caring. We're based here in California and we do educational programs and case management for patients on how to use cannabis therapeutically as a medicine. We're also here to decrease stigma around what it means to feel good and be high, hence the H for hope. I for inspiration, G for growth, and H for healing. As the founder of Holistic Caring, I basically over, oversee the, the whole ship. And what we're doing is uh, progressive education. Cannabis actually supports all 11 organ systems, our immune system, and all the neurotransmitter signaling systems that give messages to tell our body to either do something or not do something. Because the plant was prohibited, it prevented health professionals, doctors, and nurses from learning about cannabis as medicine. I want to change the paradigm of healthcare and us paving the way into a new vanguard of medicine. It's about education, it's about empowerment, it's about teaching people how to feel good, bridging the gap from what they're not getting from traditional medicine, utilizing different plant medicines, adaptogens, tips, tricks, hugs, and nugs of information to support and nourish the most important system in our body. And it's a lot of soul work, a lot of love, a lot of discipline, and meditation. I'm using my life work as a testimony to others to learn how they can be their own hero and then go help heal the world. And we are, as nurses, the game changers. Well, there you go. We are, as nurses, the game changers. Woohoo! Hey, everyone. My name is Sherry Mack, and I am the vice president and co founder of Holistic Caring and the Green Nurse. I'm a cannabis nurse, cannabis patient, advocate, and a very passionate podcaster here to change the paradigm of healthcare. I'm really excited to announce that this is my seventh year podcasting, The Green Nurse Living Your Best Life. I started podcasting in 2018 when the National Council State Boards of Nursing came out with their guidelines that all nurses must have six essential areas of knowledge when it comes to cannabis as medicine. I started podcasting to share compelling stories of healing and to decrease stigma since I too use cannabis as medicine. But before we get started on our very, very exciting show and interview, of course, we have to have a message from our sponsors. And you all know who our sponsors are. And if you don't, you're going to know right now. Bloom Hemp. Woohoo! Bloom Hemp is a woman and nurse owned national hemp and CBD supplier, leading with quality, safety, value, and patient centered care. Bloom Hemp products are USDA organic, CBD grown in the mountains of Colorado, tested for purity, potency, and cannabinoid and terpene profiles. Bloom Hemp is proud to offer a free nurse line, 970 404 HOPE, to answer questions and explain how and why CBD works in the body. And Bloom Hemp is also proud to offer 10% off with the coupon code Green Nurse. And that is our sponsor for today. And now we are going to get into our show. Very, very exciting today, show today, guys. So cannabis nursing, as you all know, has been recognized as a specialty. And nurses are truly making an impact on advocating for the therapeutic, safe use of cannabis. And today we have a remarkable nurse leader on to share her cannabis nursing journey with us, what brought her to become involved in the plant medicine arena, and all that she is doing to change the paradigm of healthcare. Nicole Foss is the CEO of Creva CBDA, which we're going to talk about. She has over 11 years of combined experience in the cannabis industries, including operations, technology, education, cultivation, and healthcare. She serves as the president of the American Cannabis Nurses Association and chair of the education committee of ACNA. 
Nicole has a passion combining evidence-based practice, peer-reviewed literature, and cannabis regulations in her educational lectures for healthcare providers, consumers, and policymakers. She holds both a master's degree in business and in nursing. Welcome, Nicole. How are you? Thanks, Sherry. It's so awesome to be here. I'm really excited to talk with you today and share my experience and also help hopefully enlighten folks as they're on their cannabis journey, be it a nurse or a patient. Awesome. So Nicole, you know, when we, I have nurses on, I have medical professionals on, I have people in the industry on, we all don't wake up one day and say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to be the CEO of Creva CBDA or I'm going to be the president of the American Cannabis Nurses Association. There's usually a story that goes along with our trajectory of how we got to where we are today. So our viewers want to get to know you, Nicole Foss. So let's hear your cannabis nursing journey. Yeah, my journey, unique like everybody's, right, started in about 2011, 2012 with a network of veterans in the state of Washington. And at this point, Washington has a, I wouldn't say robust, but we have a medical cannabis kind of marketplace up there with stores at this point. And I have this veteran network. And all of a sudden, here I am, a curious college student from a conservative Midwest family. And I'm like quizzical about this medical cannabis stuff that's going on. And I'm seeing changes in them. So I started doing little interviews like, hey, well, what are you doing now? And how are you doing that? And what's it helping with? And after all these interviews and hearing them describe the benefits and witnessing firsthand even some of the benefits like reduced agoraphobia, better sleep, I started to become really curious about the research. And, you know, the 2012, there's research out there. It's hard to find, but I'm finding it. I'm reading it. And I just want to know everything. I'm like, where do I start? Right. So as a college student, right? Well, I'm going to start with research. I know how to read research. So I started in that way. And then come around 2015, I had the opportunity to become a part of the adult use recreational cannabis marketplace in Washington. And I took on a cultivation license with a business partner. And I was able to take the anecdotal evidence, the research I was seeing, the kind of little bit of knowledge I had around cultivation at that point, and put it to work as well as my business degree at this point. And wow. so it, it kind of stemmed from there, right? So that's my, I would say, trajectory into the standard cannabis sector in Washington state. And it kind of morphed from there, right? In 2018, we have hemp become legal um, in all aspects. And I dabbled in that. And then I realized, oh man, what we're doing is maybe not serving these patients exceptionally well, right? Like here I am cultivating cannabis flower and sending it to someone who's going to turn it into an oil-based product, but they're turning that oil-based product, like the way they're manufacturing it seems a little bit sketchy. They're not really regulated. They're using butane. I'm asking myself all these questions like, is that really how we want consumers to be using cannabis in this way. And that's really, I think, where my eyes opened from a regulatory standpoint, right? Like I'm thinking, oh man, we have food standards. I know enough about our food system to understand, you know, we've got some safety measures in place, but what are the safety me measures in cannabis? And again, peeling off kind of the layers of that we've got going on here, I start diving into regulations. And I think kind of it all came together when I started looking at different extraction methods and I was exposed to a unique proprietary extraction method that used water. And it was using water in such a way that was unique from what I had seen in the, you know, kind of legacy market and now the current recreational market. And I'm starting to think, man, there's more to this place. There's more kind of what, where do we go from here? So then I started branching off into biotechnology. Okay. Well, what, what does the biotech space have? What do they do? How are they working with other herbal products? Because cannabis isn't the first herbal product or, you know, to come out there and really make its debut. We're just benefit 
betting for the, uh, benefiting from it right now. And we're, we're lucky enough to see it too. Right. 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 Yeah. So cannabis is medicine. Cannabis is a recreational drug. Cannabis as a nutraceutical cannabis is a wellness supplement, right? Cannabis fits into all of those categories and it can be very, very confusing for so many people. It um, is exceptionally confusing, right? And healthcare providers, we think it's confusing too, right? I mean, I'm thinking, how can something be a pharmaceutical drug ingredient, an NDI? How can it be a, or an API? How can it be a dietary supplement? And how can it also be sold at the 7-Eleven down the street? You know, it, it's mind blowing that we have this opportunity to see how it evolves and, and hopefully participate in it. And that's one of the areas where I see the American Cannabis Nurses Association participating is, you know, how can we set the standard for regulations and advocacy, as well as breaking down the stigma Meanwhile, wrapping it all up with the bow of education on it, which is well within the scope of nurses and healthcare providers. Well, why don't we why don't we step into ACNA a little bit since we're we're on that journey? You recently became president of the American Cannabis Nurses Association. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, that's another thing. You know, I didn't wake up one day thinking, oh, this is what I want to do. But you know, as I became more and more involved and I, I joined in 2019, mm -hmm. I joined the education committee right away because here I am, you know, college student. I, I, I'm in my MSN at this point, master's in nursing, and I want to know more. And yeah. I'm not getting it in nursing school. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to join the education committee. I like to educate. I like to put together presentations. I like to dive into the research. So I joined the education committee. I think I attended my first meeting and the next meeting I was chair because someone was stepping down. And so it was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going into this. So I joined the education committee, took over the leadership, have had some excellent chairs, co-chairs throughout my time as the education chair. And then when ACNA had the opportunity for a new leadership, I thought, you know what? I love the progress and I love the mission and vision of what this organization has to offer. And I think that some of my skills in business and my skills in operations management would be really well served in helping ACNA accomplish those goals. So that's kind of my ACNA story. So what is ACNA? Let's talk about yeah. what is ACNA? What is the mission? What is the vision? What are you excited about for ACNA? Well, I'm excited about all of it. So the ACNA is the American Cannabis Nurses Association. Our mission is to advance excellence in cannabis nursing practice through advocacy, collaboration, education, research, and policy development. So we've got those five different areas where we are looking to execute um, and bring in our knowledge as nurses, as nurse practitioners, as LPNs, and help advocate for safe cannabis use and education around that. Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. It's the American Cannabis Nurses Association. And they have a couple, we have a lot of events coming up at the ACNA, correct? Yes, absolutely. In the month of April, we have our membership drive, which we're really excited about bringing on new members. Um, they get to come and learn, understand what we do, how they can participate, be it an education, be it, you know, sitting back. And I, I think we have lots of folks who they just want to sit back and see the progress. And we allow that as well. But we also invite you to become a volunteer and to become a member that's truly involved. So we hope that we'll see everyone at our member drive in April. That's on the 21st. And then we've also got our regional meetup coming up on the East Coast for our East Coast members. And we'll be attending the CanMed conference in May, which is in Marco Island, Florida, which is hands down one of my top favorite cannabis conferences that we have out there. It is content heavy and it is just deep education in every area of the cannabis sector. And I can really, really appreciate that. So the American Cannabis Nurses Association will be there um, and we'll be spreading the word about what ACNA does, how they can participate. Um, and this is not just for healthcare providers. This conference is for truly anyone in the cannabis industry that wants to dive deep, I would say, and, and really get to the roots of what we've got going on for the future of this industry. And then lastly, in June, um, you know, kind of to 
head off the beginning of the year or the middle of the year, I suppose we've got the H&A Partnership Conference in Rochester, Minnesota. So we'll be there and we're going to have a special cannabis nurse track where um, nurses primarily can come join us and get educated in their holistic nursing practice on cannabis. Excellent. 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 Good stuff. American Cannabis Nurses Association. I've been a member since 2017. I'm happy to be on the board with you serving. Really happy, happy, happy that cannabis nursing is now finally being recognized as a specialty and that we can take this forward into nursing schools and into more educational platforms and really, really help people get access to information, education, and safe products. And um, thank you for being president. Seriously, you're doing amazing things and amazing job. It's All right. So, yeah, good job. So let's get back more into some of the interview about you here. So how do you navigate the legal and ethical considerations surrounding the use of cannabis in nursing? Right. So this is this is a really interesting question. Yeah. You know, let's start with the ethical considerations because love ethics, right? And I get questioned about this frequently. In fact, I just had a radio interview a few weeks ago and, and a gentleman said, well, you're out of your scope as a nurse. And I'm thinking, sir, I have the right to educate and I am not prescribing because I don't have a license to prescribe, right? I'm an RN, not a, a nurse practitioner. And in the state of California, I can't do that. And I thought, you know, do I have an ethical consideration of course I do, but I believe in cannabis medicine. No different than a pharmaceutical um, professional believes in the pharmaceutical drug that they are manufacturing, selling, right? It, it's the same for me. So I think I've set my ethical standards in cannabis high when it comes to product development, understanding the regulations. And I know that it's within my scope and it's within my passion to be able to share this with everyone. So my ethical considerations, you know, I think, I think it's there. I agree because as this is how I look at it from a medical professional, my ethical considerations is I have an obligation to share with patients information if it could potentially save their life. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yeah. It like mic <laughs> drop, right? If it could potentially save a life, we have an obligation to share it, right? And not get caught up in the um the stigma and the bias that that is surrounded. And that's that and that's based in, in history and racism. We know yeah. that. Yeah. And I, I think as far as like the legal kind of regulatory. I, I love that area. I love to play in it when we had the 2018 kind of legalization or broader legalization of CBD through the hemp kind of legalization and agriculture act. Uh, I really was like, okay, how does this fit in? Because again, we rolled out a program with kind of a lack of regulatory framework, but truly there, there's not a lack, right? We have other standards from our food and safety policies that the FDA has set out. We have topical and cosmetic standards that are set out by the FDA as well. We, ha we have all of these things that already exist. We, though, as the hemp cannabis kind of industry, had to figure out how those were applicable to us. And I think that was kind of the far jump was they were ready for us, but not really ready for us. So there was a lot of minutia trying to figure out how we play in this game and do it to the most legal kind of framework standard, I would say. Right. And, yeah. and yeah. So back to how do you address misconceptions or concerns about cannabis within the broader healthcare community? Because you've been in, in the sector for a while now, for 11 years. Yeah. Long. Yeah. You know, for me, I think it comes down to three things. And this touches on the, the kind of legal aspect as well is I always want to say there are three major things you have to look for when you're looking at a product. Is it manufactured in a CGMP facility? That is like the bare minimum. I, I, don't necessarily care where your GMP certificate comes from, right? It can be a super expensive conglomerate. It can be the one that costs the same or less, far less, but 
it has the same standards, right? Because rules are rules when it comes to a government. So CGMP stamp of approval, super important for me. Is there a full certificate of analysis from a third party? If if you can't provide that to me, I don't want to ingest it. And then right. the third, which I think is a little bit of a touchy subject for the cannabis uh, sector, is I like an FDA registered facility. It doesn't cost a business anything, but it puts them on the radar. And I think that if you put yourself on the radar of the FDA, you've kind of taken that little step like, I am here. I am raising my hand. You may never come and see me but I am over here in the corner maybe. And, and so I like those three real basic things. And those are minimum to me. There's so many other standards on top of it. Yeah. But it also too, if you think about it, it's a, someone is allowing themselves to be vulnerable yes. in that space. And when you're in, in being vulnerable, open, honest, real, and authentic. And that says a lot, right? Yeah. If you're willing to say, Hey, look at here I am. And I'm going to be doing this. And, uh, you know, and I'm registering and you're putting your, you're really truly putting yourself out there, then you're going to take the steps to ensure that you're doing everything the right way. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's why it's like, if man, if my healthcare providers, like in my role at Creva or even in my role at ACNA, if we can just get past those three things, nine out of 10 companies that have those three things are following through with the other aspects that they should be as a bare minimum, uh, you know, providing to patients, consumers, whichever side THC, non-THC they're in. And then the other thing that, you know, not that I like to poke the bear at this point, but I feel like I've been in it for long enough that I can talk to people and I can, I can know right away, like, do you have a stigma against it? Is cannabis the devil's lettuce to you? Or are you somewhat open? And I like to ask the question, like, if you knew Big Pharma was manufacturing this or Merrick or Bayer, would your perspective change? And no matter which way they answer it, I have a great reply, right? If they say, well, no, I wouldn't want them involved. Well, excellent. Then we have a pathway to do this. We're taking care of it safely and we don't need Big Pharma involved. And there is a sector that's providing you excellent products that meet these three standards. Or if they say, yes, I would feel more comfortable if they were in there. I'll say, well, guess what they are? They're in there. We have CBD FDA approved, literally hemp based pharmaceutical medicines that are approved. We also have synthetic ones that have been around for ages. So either way, I love to ask that question and just break down that initial stigma because no, either way, again, I feel like it's kind of a win-win question for me. Like you right. may still right. have your stigma and yeah. you can be fine either way, knowing that there are pharmaceutical companies that play in this realm. And there's also non-pharmaceutical companies, insurance companies, other healthcare providers that are all coming together to make safe products for patients. And that's it. And it's real, truly, it's about safety, safe therapeutic use. We're putting something into our bodies. We don't want to make people worse. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think people get scared when you say, well, I'm a cannabis nurse or I'm a cannabis advocate. They immediately think, oh, you're advocating for people, you know, the typical kind of stoner culture where they're sitting inside all day eating Cheetos. I don't know, like smoking weed all day. And it's like, no, 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 no. We're talking about safe, appropriate consumption of cannabis. And that is different for everybody based off of our endocannabinoid system. And Yes, just like any other vice in this world, right? There's overconsumption, but it's about the safe consumption and being in that realm and, and realizing what cannabinoid products are best for you, for your well-being. Well, what I love is the American Cannabis Nurses Association has a statement on the therapeutic yeah. use of cannabis. The use yeah. of cannabis products for healing, wellness, and medicinal purposes. Yes. There you go right there. Right. I mean, and that's different for everyone, right? So it's subjective and personal for everyone. And it's you're either using it appropriately or you're not. And for right. me, using it appropriately means you're going to see an improvement in one of the five health domains, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, or social. If you see an improvement in those areas, then you're using it appropriately. If you're not seeing an improvement and you're getting worse, then you're not using it appropriately. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. You're either living your best life with it or you're not. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And you're totally right. I think if you can get someone to realize that, then they're going to break down that stigma and they're going to realize, oh, okay. Wow. Maybe this isn't as different as someone who's addicted going to going to the gym and getting their endocannabinoid release when they're going for that run. Or, you know, it's like we're all seeking it in a different way. And at some point, we just need to augment our own ECS system. And there are products out there that are safe for consumption that can help us bring that homeostasis back. And really, that's what we're here for. We're here for health and well-being. And we want to see lives better. We want to see our quality of life better. So how can we do that? Well, we can do that with safe education. There you go. And that brings me into the next question. What ongoing education or training do you pursue to stay informed about the latest developments in cannabis research and its application in holistic care? How, how do you get educated? Where, where do you go? So I love to read. I love to nerd out and read research. That's therapeutic for me, I suppose. So I find myself on Canakees, which is an excellent database. And if you're an ACNA member, um, you get a special discount um, for the Canakees uh, cannabis database. I love to go on there. If I see a goofy thing on TV and I'm like, I wonder, could they use cannabis for that? I'm going to go to their database. I'm going to use their medical diagnosis lookup, and I'm going to see what the research is out there. Or if I, you know, interact with someone outside, I, I just, I'm curious always. So for me, I think reading is number one. Number two, I love conferences. I mentioned CanMed. I love being in that environment surrounded by people who are just as passionate and understanding of cannabis medicine. It's no different than our ACNA conference last year in Denver. I love those vibes. I love bringing it all together. I love sharing um, the education and I love learning from everyone, right? It's not just about learning from experts, like you'll interact with that can med, but it's, it's also interacting with novices who are educating because you can still learn something from them. And no matter what they're, they're bringing in that passion. So I always try to take away one, you know, kind of key fact, key evidence-based practice that I can bring into my world from be it a presentation, be it research, um, yeah. And, you know, the other thing I'd always say is go to the ACNA website. We have excellent webinars as well. The education committee is always coming up with excellent ways for us to break down kind of the convoluted world of cannabis, right? Even just starting with the vocabulary. That's where right. our novice healthcare practitioners need to start. We're all speaking a different language when it comes to cannabis. And we've got to get on the same page regulatory wise, you know, in our legal speak, but also in our industry, because it's very different what we're talking about. And we need to be on the same page. Absolutely. Hands down. So let's get into people love to hear case stories. They love to hear compelling stories of healing. And, you know, you've been working with patients as well. Can you discuss a specific case where cannabis played a significant role in the holistic treatment plan of a patient or a client that you've worked with? Just people just love a good story. Like, what stands out to you as something that like, okay, really so I have two, okay. I think. I've my first one, I, I kind of mentioned earlier the agoraphobia. So like the anxiety of leaving a safe environment, a safe place, right? So one of the very really quickly, that is yes. a real live thing. Yes. Yes. And I will, I'm going to disclose to our audience here that I had that yes. when I was at my sickest yes. and it's horrible. It's debilitating. So I'm, I'm happy to have you share that because agoraphobia isn't something that people like to talk about. It's is not it, more around that as well. Yeah, of course. I mean, when you say like, oh, I don't want to leave my house, you know, people look at you weird or maybe it's not your house. Maybe it's some other safe environment for nine times out of 10. It's your home, right? You feel safe here. It's that area. So when I started working with veterans, I got to know a veteran who would never want to leave his house. He would go in the backyard and he would still interact with a small group of veterans. And I got to know him and I thought, oh man, like he's starting to use cannabis. I'm starting to see him 
venture outside a little bit further, right? He had animals. So it was like, first he's outside with his dogs in the backyard. That's a step in the right direction. Now he's taking his dogs for a walk after consuming cannabis. Now, you know, X, Y, and Z kept building and building until he was actually able to leave his home and go do CBT therapy with a therapist to make even more progress. So it was like, the linchpin was cannabis. Once we, we got that going, he was able to make this progress. And I mean, I'm here to say today, he is an awesome, you know, outgoing, he's way outside of his house, fully employed. And that's the change that cannabis made for him that I got to witness. And really Sherry, that was my like, aha moment. If, if that could change that, what else can it do? And you think about the pleiotropic nature of the plant. It worked on all the physiologies all at the exact same time, right? And so cannabis, you, we think about the amount of receptors we have in our brain. It's, it's automatic psychiatry. So you just imagine, you know, some of my best sessions with my therapist was while I was using cannabis because you're open and you're not afraid. It, 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 it helps to decrease that fear and helps you to sink into the relaxation response. And the relaxation response provides the most opportunity for us to heal. We know the endocannabinoid system signals both the fight or flight and the relaxation response. Well, we're in the fight or flight response. That's all we're doing is fighting or flighting. Right? There's nothing else. You know, yeah. fight, flight, freeze, fawn. And so being in the relaxation response, having cannabinoids on board is like a, like a little warm blanket that allows you to engage in life and other life-sustaining activities to, to help you, you know, truly heal on that healing yeah. trajectory. That's amazing. It, it, it's definitely, it was a blessing. And I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of that journey and, and watch him come out on the other side and, and see many of the other veterans that I was networked with to also make it through PTSD, sleep disturbances, you know, kind of the whole gamut that our veteran population deals with. Um, but I'll, I'm going to switch to my second patient because it's completely the opposite. Um, so my second patient story that I absolutely love has to do with Kriva. And this was a older woman living alone in her eighties. And she was cooking and dropped a pan on her foot full of burning hot water. And she was in pain. She didn't have very like I, I, they weren't very deep burns. It couldn't have been very hot water. I'm not really sure, you know, as the story goes. Um, but what she ended up doing was she was able to put Kriva's topical on her burn and on her foot. And she sends me this picture of a pre and a post and the edema and inflammation that went down within the span of hours. It just, it floored me. I was like, how is that even possible? Like, how did we go from A to B? And she's like, I didn't do anything but rub this lotion on there and just sit. And she's like, it worked. And I, I, as a researcher, as a scientist, and even as a product formulator, I'm the same way in my life. I'm like, is this really going to work when it comes to my own products that I'm manufacturing or my friend's products? I'm like, this isn't going to work this time. Like, oh, my wrist is feeling a little tender from the gym. Uh, it might work. It might not work. And when it works, I'm like, well, shoot, it worked again. You know, like the consistency of it over time. And so really when that patient came to me, I was like, you know, there's just such a broad range. Like I think about it in this traditional sense of like, cannabis medicine, veterans, patients, but we have this whole other, you know, kind of use case over here of, I just hurt my foot because I was cooking and I couldn't lift up the pan and voila, this made my life so much better. My recovery was much faster. And so it's, it's the little nuances of quote cannabis medicine that are just as meaningful as, as the big ones too. And that's what I love. This It's so amazing that it was a topical too, as well, something gentle and something that didn't even have to go in systemically. You know, she was able to use that and have such great results. So how did you, this brings us into Kriva. Since Kriva was the product, you are CEO of Kriva, CBDA. Yeah. So how did I get there? Uh, you know, I was through all these different cannabis companies, multiple ones, and I kind of got polched a little from one of them to come over. Um, and a lot of the company's founders, you know, they just didn't have the cannabis knowledge that I had. 
that's truly it. They had really great engineering background and they thought, man, this girl knows what she's talking about. She has some brains on her about this cannabis and bonus. She's a nurse and can talk about patients. And so I got involved. And at when we had started the company, we were actually really focused on the extraction method. So all of these products are extracted with our water-based extraction technique. So they're extra safe. And that I really love that underlying technology that helps bring a safe product to market. So regardless, we, we started with extraction of CBDA. And CBDA is the molecular precursor to CBD. So when you're looking at a hemp plant out in the field, say you're driving in Oregon and you can see them in the middle of the road, um, that is actually the acidic version of CBD, CBDA, that's in that hemp plant in abundant amounts. And when we like to extract it with more traditional extraction methods that require heat, some oxidation, we actually remove a chemical, chemical group on that CBDA to turn it into, morph it into CBD. And so what we found is, you know, when we came out with this for proprietary method. Um, I'll be honest, I don't think anybody really knew what CBDA was. I went to one of the biggest conglomerates in cannabis. I told them what we were doing and I told them my background and they were like, Nicole, we know that you've got some good ideas, but what you're doing is dumb and it's an inactive compound and it's not going to work. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. Sounds cool. So I went back to the research because I'm a researcher at heart and I'm thinking they are wrong. What are they talking about? Get out of this little hole of cannabis research happening in the United States, you know, in 2017, 2018, there's not a lot going on. If you look across the world, there's excellent research on acidic cannabinoids. And so what we decided to do was prove them wrong. And I was like, well, cool. I'm all for it. Let's break down the stigma some more. Let's take our proprietary extraction ingredient and let's figure out how to use it in products. So it was a lot of self-exploration at the beginning, looking at research, understanding. Thankfully, most of the co-founders and I have really awesome families that were willing to try topicals with us. Like, oh, does this feel good? Does this hurt? Um, you know, I have a 94-year-old grandfather with um, rheumatic arthritis. And I'm like sending them to the Midwest for my grandpa. I'm like, try this. Does this work? You know, like trying to get that feedback to understand what the proper dosing is because it doesn't exist. And then being able to take it a step further and work with companies out there that are doing kind of this anecdotal research now that that didn't exist, you know, in 2017. So kind of fast forward to where we're at now. And that throughout that whole time, I've been able to really understand acidic cannabinoids, not just CBDA, CBGA, THCA, and kind of how those work with our endocannabinoid system and fit into the broader picture of cannabinoid medicine. There you go. Yeah. And so, and you actually took it even a step further yeah. as a researcher and put your products in the Kenigma more relief, better, wait, more better relief app. Yes. Kenigma more better relief app. So tell us about that process and what that was like and what the results were. Yeah. So we participated in sending out our lotion product, which our lotion product is manufactured by just honestly, like some of the best cosmetic chemists have helped me understand topical regulations, cosmetic regulations, as well as best practices. And, and they're out of New York and um, they're actually like the same. They do. I got to tour them. Super cool. They do like all your big names, your Fenty Beauty, your Tom Ford. I mean, this is a big company that took a risk on making a topical lotion with us. And so we made this, you know, about 20 iterations lotion. They manufactured it for us and about three years in. Um, so this last year with Creva, we decided, you know, we have all this anecdotal evidence, but there's no way for me to compile it all and put together kind of a case study. So that's what we did with the Kenigma More Better Relief app. We sent out our lotion to a cool hundred plus participants 
And we had them, you know, take the third party kind of survey scale that um, the relief app sends folks on a daily basis. So they tried the product for 21 days. And then prior to the 21 day trial, they had a seven day no cannabinoid kind of trial where they were tracking their well being, their pain level. And the results were astonishing. I mean, you talk about like seeing it to believe it, right? Like I have all these little stories, but all of a sudden I have some hard data. You know, I have indexes, um, the WHO5 well-being index, right? That's coming out saying, yes, the well-being over time from the folks that were using this was statistically significant. Their well-being was better. And so it's like, oh, we, we are changing lives. You know, that's why we're here. Um, and even talking about the pain interference levels over time, that was probably one of the most exciting metrics that we got back was this is like threefold statistically helping with pain. And that's one of the areas where we find CBDA kind of our, our inflammatory pathways, right? Which we know in helps aid in our perception of pain or not aid in our reception of pain and how we can kind of bring that together with our endocannabinoid system, bring back the homeostasis. And, you know, for a lot of these patients, it was their, our patients, uh, participants, let's call them, it was their first time using CBDA. And so they were really expecting a traditional CBD kind of relief, like, oh, it's probably going to touch this pain or this pain. And so a lot of the comments that came back in the survey was, wow, I didn't even know CBDA existed, let alone how awesome this is working for my shoulder pain, my knee pain, uh, my back pain, my overall well-being. And even using a topical, there was some improvement in sleep, which we love to see as well, because of course we've got this endocannabinoid system. That's it. And we have receptors in our skin. Yes. And guess what, people? Our skin is our largest organ. <laughs> Amazing. And it's a great start to cannabis therapeutics. It's how my mom started. My mom blocked me on Facebook and wrote me out of her will for two weeks, two weeks, two years. I'm not kidding. I love you, mom. But it was literally, it was a topical that allowed her to become familiar and unafraid. It's a great starting point. You know, you cannot get high off of using topicals unless they have an ingredient that breaks down and can get into your bloodstream and cross the blood-brain barrier. But other than that, topicals do not penetrate. Yes. And that's what a lot of our work focuses on as Kriva is kind of that foot in the door, right? We know that the traditional cannabis consumer, they're going to take tinctures, they're going to maybe have a gummy, but it's that other realm that we're really trying to touch. And for Kriva, it's professional athletes, your weekend warriors, those people that are really putting the grueling miles on their body, right? The chronic inflammation and how we can help that. And then for our professional athletes, it's how can we help aid your sleep patterns? Because we know you have this crazy schedule and our foot in the door is always just try this topical, right? The number of shows that we go to where it's like, you know what, just take this little bit of lotion, rub it on your knee. Cause I can see you limping and come back in 15 minutes and tell me how you're feeling. Call it the Kriva challenge. Go do it. Right. And, and they're coming back and, and they're like, well, it does feel better. You know, just like, I'm like, is it going to help my wrist this week? They're just as quizzical and just as curious then. So I, I love the topical realm. I think there are some excellent topicals out there and excellent ones that are, aren't even menthol based. Right. That was yeah. one of the important things they wanted to do. Yeah. The spicy menthol. I feel it, it, it's too much. Like yeah. it makes me more pain aware. <laughs> Yes. And I think for some people it really does, right? It's not truly fighting the inflammatory pathway. It's not really reducing our pain. Effectively, it's tricking our mind and surging some blood to that area. So then we're like, oh yeah, it's feeling better, but it's not really looking at the deeper mechanism. And, and that's where I think cannabinoid therapies on topical applications is just really exciting. Yeah, it is really exciting. And I just want to, you know, give another plug for your company because who doesn't love a good deal, right? Who doesn't love a good deal? How cool is it if you subscribe to your newsletter, www.creva.co, you sign up for the newsletter and you're going to get 25% off your first purchase. Thank you for offering that to clients. I think it's good. If they need to read, they need to learn. And a lot of people, you know, are afraid to buy. And so to have a discount on a product, it means a lot. 
So thank you for offering that. Of course. We're excited to, we'd love to people to try it, right? Um, yeah. Try it and, you know, tell us your feedback. Uh, we love to get the emails that come in like, hey, you know, my husband bought this for me and I didn't know if it was going to work, but man, I'm suddenly sleeping through the night and I feel more rested in the morning. Well, excellent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so good. So we're going to, we're, we're getting close to the end and there's a couple more questions I have for you, which I think, you know, we always want to talk about good. We also want to talk about some challenges. You've been in this role for 11 years and boy, I just want to give you a high five for hanging in there because I'll tell you what, it is can be very, very challenging. So for our viewers, you know, you've been in the cannabis arena as a nurse for 11 years. And so can you share the challenges you face in integrating cannabis into holistic care and how you've overcome them? What are some of the challenges you face every day in your role as a CEO? Yeah, well, I think as a CEO, but even as a nurse and just as a nurse. human, it's the stigma, right? Yeah. It's it's the stigma. It's the propaganda from prohibition times that stick with us. It's the systemic racism that's kind of propagated within cannabis culture. It, it's all of those. And it goes back again to that question. I love to ask people like, well, would you be more comfortable if the FDA and the government were involved? And if you are like, excellent. So I feel like breaking down that stigma, uh, you know, especially as someone who came from the Midwest, we're like, this is not, it was not as free to talk about as when I came out to the West Coast in Washington and California. Now we, we didn't have those conversations. And even my parents, you know, when I first told them what I were doing, they were like, um, excuse me, what? Like, you know, maybe don't tell our family about that. And now they're out there like, hey, have you heard of my daughter's creva lotion? Like, you got to try this. My dad's got exactly. it in his in his office. You know, it's it's everybody. It, it comes yeah. together full circle. It does. And I love it. My mother goes to her doctor. Did you know my daughter's a marijuana nurse? <laughs> my daughter's a marijuana nurse. And guess what? It works. And so this is it's just amazing. But it just takes time and hand holding. And it's that like you said, what is truly a miracle? A miracle is a shift of perception, that aha moment when it just makes sense, right? When it, <laughs> truly um, that mirror, that shift of perception of, of, wow, this really isn't so bad after all. Wow, this is truly helping me. And, you know, in my, one of my mother's comments, you know, when, I, when she, I actually interviewed her, she came on the podcast because she was so stigmatized against cannabis. And once it started to work for her and, her, and she moved through it, she doesn't stop talking about it. And, you know, basically she goes, I feel good and I'm not high. And I go, well, mom, what does it mean to feel good and not be high? Well, I'm not so grumpy. The pains become background noise. I'm not so depressed about my medical problems. I'm giggling and laughing a lot more and I'm sleeping a whole lot better. And I go, but you're not high. She goes, no, I feel good. And so that's the difference, right? There's a difference between feeling good dysphoria to me is a crime. <laughs> we, we have tools available to help people reach new levels of wellness and health. And we as nurses are here to educate on those. And, and you know, to, just to be able to have my mom giggle about it. And now, you know, she kind of feels a little cool that, you know, she's now on the bus. She got on the bus. Love it. Yes. And a bus. Right. And it's, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's just, I, I can, I can breathe now knowing that she is, is I'm, I'm, not, I'm back in the will, number one, thank God. And number two, you know, I know that she's going to be able to use this appropriately um, because she has, we, we created a toolbox for her. Um, so yeah, so just, it's just ultra important that we, that we educate and empower our clients. We meet them where they're at. We handhold and we just, we just hold space for people to be where they're at, meet them where they're at. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Oh, yeah. So Nicole, any, any, any last words for people that are new out there that if you, if you, you know, just wanted to just any words of wisdom, words of wisdom as we close out the show. Yeah. I think don't give up. 
because your passion comes through. And when I speak to people who do have a negative perception about cannabis and they see the passion and they see that I'm not what they envisioned as a typical cannabis consumer, right? I, it comes back to just not giving up, right? And that I never gave up. I always remained passionate about it, even if I couldn't be out loud about it and yell it to the streets and wear my ACNA badge, right? Like, I stuck through it. And I think if you're passionate about something and you have a story that goes behind it, it makes it easier to not give up. And, and there are resources out there, right? Join a community, joining ACNA definitely helps me open up my conversation more and then continuing to just trudge through it and get educated. So keep on keeping on and you'll make it to the other side if you're stuck in kind of that weird limbo where you can't really be your whole self. Yeah. All right, let me just see if there's any questions from yes, the story. Just looking at our, we have a lot of people tuning in. Thank you all for tuning in today. There's no questions, but um, for today, but everyone, everyone's saying hello in, in Facebook land and social media land. And um, this has been an amazing show. Nicole, thank you for all the work that you're doing in changing the paradigm of healthcare, being leader of the American Cannabis Nurses Association and leading CREVA CBDA for people. And remember everyone what it's all about. It is truly all about living your best life and helping others do the same. And we're going to end with one of my other favorite videos that means so much to me. And we will see you all next week. We're here to educate and empower patients to make choices that are best for them. We're also here to decrease stigma around what it means to feel good and be high. Hence the H for hope, I for inspiration, G for growth, and H for healing. The Green Nurse is a holistic cannabis nurse that teaches on the endocannabinoid system in the safe utilization of cannabis and other progressive tools to help people reach a better quality of life. I was cannabis agnostic for many, many years. And you know, the more research I did, the more I discovered the cannabis is this amazing medicine. I was told that I had a four stage pancreatic cancer. The doctor really told me he couldn't do anything else. He gave me her name and she called me and she came to my house. She started to give me cannabis. My oncologist was puzzled because he couldn't find the cancer anymore. All of the learning that we get yeah. comes from the Green Nurses Group, comes from their support, comes from their guidance. I trust everything that she says. Simply meet people where they're at. The plant doesn't, you know, stress to grow, so we don't stress to share it. We're healing people. Cannabis has been used as a medicine for tens upon thousands of years. Here's the big message. Cannabis needs to be federally legal. We need to have laws that are the same across all 50 states that allow access to anyone and everyone who wants to utilize this powerful medicine.